The twenty-fifth day of December When ages beyond number had run their course From the creation of the world When God in the beginning Created heaven and earth And formed man in his own likeness When century upon century had passed, since the Almighty set his bow in the clouds after the great flood as a sign of covenant and peace. In the 21st century since Abraham, our father in faith, came out of the Ur of the Chaldees, In the 13th century, since the people of Israel were led by Moses in exodus from Egypt. Around the thousandth year, since David was anointed king, in the 65th week of the prophecy of Daniel, In the 194th Olympiad, in the year 752, since the foundation of the city of Rome, in the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace. Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit And when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah, and was made man. The Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the flesh. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you have made manifest your love. When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. 
Lord, Lord, bless all who look upon this manger and bless this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts to him who is God with us and Savior to all, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, at this midnight Mass, this Christmas Eve Mass, I wish to extend to all of you a very blessed and Merry Christmas. It's a good thing you do coming here this evening. Know that God sees the sacrifice you make to be here, especially on a cold night in Florida, right? <laughs> but to be here to give glory and praise to God. So as we prepare ourselves for this holy sacrifice, let us take a few moments now calling to mind those times when we have sin and asking God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have followed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Oh, 
Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in terra fuera pax. In excelsis Deo, Gloria, 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 in excelsis Deo, et in terra fuera pars. Let us pray. O oh God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we, who have known the mysteries of his light on earth, may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest. As people make merry when dividing spoils, for the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given, us. Upon his shoulder, dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, 
God hero, Father forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope and the appearance of glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. May the words of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ be in your heart and on your lips, that you proclaim it worthy and well. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Christian. Alleluia. 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 And with your spirit. A reading from the beginning of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Amminadab, Amminadab became the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David, the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam, the father of Abijah, Abijah, the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram, Joram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham, Jotham, the father of Ahaz, Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Amos, Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shetil. Shetil, the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abiud. Abiud became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor. Azor, the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Akim. Akim, the father of Eliud. Eliud, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Mathan. Mathan, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, 
for it is through the Holy Spirit this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, I wish to extend to all of you a very blessed and Merry Christmas, not only on my own behalf, but on behalf of Monsignor, the priests, the deacons, and the staff here at Epiphany Cathedral. You just heard a, a listing of 40 names coming out of the Old Testament, both male and female, more male names, but both were present. The important thing that back in the day the people would have heard when Matthew recorded this because it was a an ambient they lived in that knew of scripture knew scripture well the Old Testament and they would have known exactly what was happening here that they the genealogy the line had to go from David to Jesus but it all started with Abraham when he went through the desert and led his people into the promised land. Then the Israelites started to come together. And then we heard those 14 read, and then all of a sudden David shows up in there. And then we hear it read again, and we hear about Joseph appearing. And that's St. Joseph, foster father of Jesus. And I'll talk more about that later. But it was key that Jesus be associated particularly with David and Abraham. And even though Abraham came before him, our reading says, you know, in the line of David and Abraham. David was the great king. David was a ruler. And that one who was to follow was to be a king also. We heard his name was to be Jesus. But once again, we'll get to that in a minute. The, each name that was read out, to us, maybe didn't mean too much. And I say thank you to the deacon because they're not easy names to spit out. However, it is a recording to that point in time of salvation history. The history of your salvation, mine. We are part of that salvation history. We are living it. You've heard me say it before. We have a contribution to make, however so small. But it's there to be made by each one of us. And it's a good thing you are here this evening. It's a good thing you do. But the ancient Jews, for them, each name that was read out, really, they could associate key events in salvation history, in the idea of the covenant with God. It was all there for them. Nothing was missed. Also, the genealogy had something to say about mission and responsibility. It did for them... It should for us. Mission and responsibility. You and I have to know about that. We have to live it. These 17, they didn't see maybe short verses, but they are. 17 short verses gave the whole history of Israel from the beginning of time, really from Adam and Eve coming right up to Jesus, the time of the covenant. The names would have brought back various incidents, episodes, twists, turns, tragedies, triumphs to the people who heard them. Triumphs were with David for sure during that time, huge, but also with Abraham, what he accomplished. 
Some of the others along the way, it's kind of up and down. It was, and we sing about this in a, in a song, the hopes and fears of all the years. All the years that the Israeli people, the Jews, had waited for the Messiah. It was happening tonight, and we heard about it in Scripture. That lineage, as I noted earlier, and this is key to understanding this, had to go back to David and Abraham. Matthew places this whole story of Jesus and the genealogy within the context of God's dealing with the Israelites. Not always pleasant, not always a harmonious relationship, really. It was difficult from time to time. And it reaches a climax with the child coming into the world, that child Jesus. Truly that genealogy, and this was what Matthew, the author of this gospel, was trying to do to establish the credentials of Jesus Christ. He was in the line of the kings. He was to be a king. His reign would be totally different from David's, from Abraham's, from any of them. But he was in the line to be a king. And this idea of the legal heir that he was and we notice what Matthew does when he gets to um, Joseph, who was the husband of Mary. Doesn't say, all along it's been mother, father, or they say, you know, this father was married to this woman. It goes back and forth. Gets to Joseph, who was married to Mary. And then he goes on, the part about that becomes really important is the whole idea of the naming. And that whole idea of who's going to be named. And it says that Joseph names the child. And he's been told by the angel, and you heard it, what he was to be called. So if we look at that whole part after the genealogy, the angel addresses him four times in Scripture. We hear very little. Joseph doesn't speak in Scripture. Four dreams, and there's always an angel speaking to him. And he gets up and obeys. Extremely obedient. Joseph is always doing what the Lord is asking of him. A great role model, and I say particularly for men. Always doing what the Lord asked. But to come back to this, the angel addresses him, son of David, clearly putting him in the line. And he calls out and he points at Joseph, Basically, he's that own royal heritage that he has. You are to name him. We heard it in the reading. You are to name him. And it's going to be Jesus. In the Old Testament, and in, back in the day, the naming was key. If you name somebody, that was your child. I think there was a recent film out recently and it shows a discussion between Joseph and Mary about sh what should they name him. And Joseph said, well, the angel told us what to name him. And it, it kind of a response indicating there's nobody else by that name in the family. You know, it always followed somebody, as many of our own families do. There was no Jesus. But they decide together, all right, that's what he will be named. And it's Joseph who's been told this in the dream. Joseph there becomes the father of Jesus. Adopted foster father, but the father of Jesus. Why do we go through all of this? Why did you hear, listen to all those names? God's plan from the beginning of time, really, has been to unite us to himself. Since the time of Adam and Eve, God has sought you and me at every corner that we may have gone to or place we've gone to or tried to avoid, whatever the situation may be. God sought continually the Israelites in those tragedies and in the accomplishments. But God was always there. In our own lives, if we allow it, in the accomplishments, in the tragedies, in striving for the mission that he gives to you and to me. 
our responsibilities in life. God is reaching out continually for every one of us here. You good people come here today in a response. You know, the rest of salvation history, if we want to say, is the story of God seeking, seeking us out, seeking the human race, the human family. We need to establish that relationship with our Lord, with Jesus Christ. Our Holy Father speaks over and over again about the relationship that we should develop with Christ, each one of us. He's talking about what's right here in Scripture. It's not a revolutionary thing, but it's something that God reaches to us to do. Take this opportunity, this midnight mass that you're attending, to think about how is it you respond to that call of the Lord, that reach of God to you. How is it we respond? We have a responsibility. You're here tonight. You know your responsibility, and you evidence that. But we have to do it not one night, not one day. We have to do it by the life we live continually, knowing the child in the manger represents our Savior, is all about salvation and salvation history. And everyone here has a role to play in that. You have to discern what yours is, as I do, as everyone here does. We have to respond to the Lord. In this holiday season, we're busy with a lot of things, gifts and lots of things to be cooked and consumed tomorrow and everything. Let's think about who we are, how we are responding to that God who seeks us, each one of us, individually. How is it we live our life in response to that call? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Tonight when we say our creed, when we profess it together for those who are able, when we reach the words about being born incarnate, we should genuflect at that time for those who are able. So let us begin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. For with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Redeemer has been born and he dwells among us. Let us now offer him our prayers and intentions on this Christmas Eve. Our response is, loving God, hear our prayer. For the church, Pope Francis, and all bishops throughout the world, that they experience peace and spiritual nourishment during the season of Christmas, we pray. 
God, hear our prayer. For all nations, that the peace of Christ reign in our world, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For our culture, that it may embrace the truth of human dignity as taught and demanded by our Lord, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For our service men and women and all those who may be separated from their families this Christmas, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all families that parents strive to model the holiness shown to us by the parents of Jesus, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all those who are imprisoned, that they be reconciled with the Lord and know his care for them, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and for the living members of the Roca and Shea families for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts and written in our parish petition book, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. God Almighty, you have given your Son as our greatest gift. Teach us to love like you. Hear these prayers of hope and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full Full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion we have are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, 
especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it special and spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, God Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Eat this bread and drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share 
and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace. We told his peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On his day, we told his peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On his day, we told his peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen.
blood of Christ. Blood of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The Almighty God bless you. Amen. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ, Lord. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the Feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just want to take this opportunity to our musicians who are here, those who let us also in song and praise of God this evening. I want to thank Father Alex for singing us the message. Thank you very much. I want to thank the ushers who are here this evening, the lectors, all who have come together to make this celebration, our servers. I know when the bishop is here, he messes everything up, but you did very well. <laughs> and thank you all for being here. And once again, a very blessed Christmas to you. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined this holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to the shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and makes you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and the heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you shares with the church in heaven. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The go, go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King, and every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature go, heaven and nature sing, heaven and heaven and nature sing. Your reigns Repeat the song be joy the song be joy Repeat Repeat the song be joy the world with truth and grace. Thank you. Service, thank you very much. <laughs> 